Welcome to Christian Assembly of Schriever, a full gospel Bible believing church. We are people who love God, who worship Him and praise Him. Please join us now for a great word that the Lord has for us today. Oh, oh, oh. 
the dead man say I am born again.
resurrecting you yeah. amen amen you can't keep a good man down 
Whew. Three days later, he rose. Amen. He's no longer in the grave. Nope. He just borrowed that tomb, didn't he? He said, I'm not going to keep it. I'm not going to need it. Amen. And you know, the grave that we're buried in, we're not going to keep it either. We're going to rise. We're going to go up. That's right. Amen. Amen. If we're, if we're not living and we've already dawned, then the dead in Christ will rise first. And then uh, we that are alive and remain, we caught away. Amen. Caught away to meet Jesus in the air. What a glorious day. It could be this year. It could be. Know it's coming soon. The signs of the times are there. Jesus told us to watch for the signs, and they're all around us. You can't deny them. You know, I, I often wonder how does someone go about their life and not believe in God? How do, I, how do you not believe in God? And I, I don't know. I just I can't fathom that. It's just hard to understand how someone can't believe. You just look around you. You know, the earth didn't just form. You know, they say it's a big bang theory. Well, I believe it did make a loud noise when God said, you know, created everything. I, I think there was a loud noise. You know, so they, there is a little truth to the big bang theory there. You know, it was a big bang theory. But, uh, you know, God made everything. He made the mountains. He made the seas. You know, I talked about that the other week. What? What causes the water not to come up any more on the shore than it does? You go to the beach and it comes up to a certain point and it stops. God did that. You know, that's God. It doesn't just happen on its own. God put all of that into place. And he has a plan. And he has a plan for me and he has a plan for you. And his plan is for you to accept his son Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That way you can go to heaven and be with the Father. Jesus said, there's only one way to the Father, and that's through him. We have to believe that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah that came, born and died, and rose again, and now sits at the Father's right hand. Amen. Prepare the way. I thought it was a fitting song for today as the new year is approaching us. We need to prepare the way. Prepare the way. Prepare yourself. Because Jesus is coming again, amen.
King of kings and lords of all. Thank you.
Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for another year, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for being in our lives, Lord God. And Father, just allowing us to be able to worship you. Father, you are the Lord of Lords. Father, we praise you today, Lord God. Father, we just thank you for being here amongst us. Thank you, Father. Worship you, Lord God. Praise you, Jesus. Yes, Father. Just feel his presence, church. Feel his presence. just ask that you would just bless this offering, Lord. Allow it to be dispersed, Father, however it is that you see fit, Lord God. Father, we ask that you would bless our pastor, Father. As he comes up here to give the word, Father, allow him, Lord God, to be a vessel, a vessel just to be poured out. His word, your word, Father, poured out of him, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Bless the offering in Jesus' name. Happy New Year to everybody. Hallelujah. Hadn't seen y'all since last year. Amen. Haven't preached since last year, so get ready. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. Stayed up a little bit late this morning. We, were, we went out to uh, visit with uh, Packy's daughter, Amanda, who was in from Vietnam. She is a missionary too there. And uh, wound up staying there a little while. Went there about 10 o'clock again. Went there twice yesterday just to visit with them. And then we were going to leave to come home. But then saw Mikey Cheshire and his, his family down the road from them. Had another family that's friends with us from, from Bible Assembly. And we just had a good time. We played and had a good time. And just uh, Mikey just and Shireen are both just still on the field getting after it. She just came back from Africa. And they're about to go somewhere else in about another week. So keep them in prayer. Is God good? Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for bringing us through the old year, 2022. Father, you've done some great things in 2022. We've seen some crazy things, but Father, we've seen your power despite the crazy things. And Father, we know that based on last year, it is a history. Father God, by history, we know that when things come against us, you're always there to turn things around. We trust you in 2023 beyond all things. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. Amen. Brother Tommy mentioned uh, the Big Bang. Hallelujah. I'm going to let you know, I, you know, I believe in evolution. Now that I got you quiet. Amen. I believe in evolution in the sense that when the Lord saves us, we should always be evolving. Should always be evolving. That's good evolution. And that's not a theory. That's a fact. F-A-C-K, fact. That's a fact. We should always be evolving. If you're saved, you should always be evolving. If you're still the same old, same old since before you've been saved, you see, because Things that evolve are things that are living. Things that do not evolve are things that are... Um, do you believe in evolution? <laughs> in Christ, yes. You see, we are born again as babes in Christ. We're not supposed to stay there. There comes a time we've got to get out the nursery. Change our own diapers. Make our own bottles. Grow our own teeth so we can chew on the word of the Lord instead of wanting grits and milk all the time. That's for free. I wasn't even planning to say that today. But listen, this is a new year. I do not make resolutions. They die within the first few weeks because we really don't mean them. Hey Amen. How about make, let's, let's have some repentances instead of some revolutions. <laughs> Of things that maybe see the past year is is exactly that past, amen. There is a song that we used to sing in church. I don't know what you came to do, but 
I'm going to praise the Lord. How many of you remember that? I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know. You remember the song? And there's a lot of Jericho marchers started having the song. I'm going to praise the Lord. The tambourine started flying. I don't know. You remember that? Maybe we need to have a service like that. One. Are, you, are you with me? Break out the tambourines and get free up in the joint. Amen. I don't listen. This coming year, I don't know, Christian Sing, what you came to do. But I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what your plan is, but I'm going on with Jesus. Amen. And there's only one way to go with Jesus forward. If you ain't going forward with Jesus, you're going backward. Because complacency is going backward. Amen. So I don't know what in 2023, what you plan to do, but I plan to serve the Lord. I plan on moving forward with Jesus. Who is going with me? Because I don't want to go there by myself, but I will, but I won't, but I don't want to. Are you? Thank you for the 10 people that's ready to go. Amen. Do you love the Lord? <laughs> God is good. You still going to love me after this message today? I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. See, I went to see the doctor the other day, and uh, he said I had some fluid around my heart and all sort of kind of stuff. Did an echo. Um, when the doctor tells you he wants you to be more active and put you on Lasix, you're going to be more active. A bunch of different ways. Amen. And uh, so, <laughs> and he said, now he had a conversation with me, and he said, your heart is still healthy. He said, I want you to understand that from the get-go. He said, but it's beating on, on the lower side of normal. Now, I'm going to preach to you through this, okay? There are people out there who love God and have a heartbeat for God, but the heartbeat is beating a little bit lower than on the lower side of normal. Amen. And he also told me, he said, um, you are at a fork in the road. He said, you need to decide which, which way you're going to take. He said, the left road is the road where you do nothing and don't change anything and die sooner. Or, he said, you can take the right road, take care of yourself, and live longer. He said, so please go right so you won't get left. That's a doctor preaching to me. How many know sometimes we need to hear the truth about ourselves? You should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Before I start preaching, I want you to accept something this morning. There's something wrong with you. But God wants to make it right. Amen. Listen. Forget everything behind you. Put it all back there. Forgetting what is behind, like Paul says, and press on toward the mark of my high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. We've got to forget the things, even that's good things. It ain't there no more. Amen. Ain't there no more. This year, I have planted in my heart solid. I don't know what it all means, but the decision I have made for this year, hopefully for the rest of my life, is I don't want to be where God ain't. I don't want to be where God ain't, but I want to be where he is. I want to be where his plan is unfolding in my life. I want to be where his will is being done in my life. Troy going to sit down this year, and God's going to rise up through me and in me to be what he wants to be in me. I don't care what it is. You see, God dealt with me about something and gave me a revelation. I started having issues with my heart and all this other kind of stuff because I was camping at the fork of the road. I was camping at the fork of the road. I wanted the blessings of doing right without having to do right. You see, a lot of folks today, they want the blessing of God without God himself. There are so many who want to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. There are so many who want the recognition of Jesus Christ in their lives, but they don't have nothing to do with him until... Ain't no rock. I think that's going to be my theme this year, but see, ain't no rock going to cry in my place this year. Do you love the Lord? 
It's time to forget those things which are behind and press forward toward the mark of a high calling in Christ Jesus. I have a question. What if this is the year Jesus comes? What if the Bible says we know that Jesus is coming back. We know what the Bible says what's going to happen with the earth. The Bible says it's going to burn up with a fervent heat. Everything we see is going to be destroyed by fire. And he mentions a whole bunch of other things. And he said, knowing this, what kind of servant should you be? The closer we get to the rapture, which could be any second now, what kind of servant should we be? Listen, we be the kind of servant we need to be if we believe that is true. Too many people don't believe in the rapture. I don't care what you think. It's in the Bible. I don't care what science says. I don't care what some other preacher says. I don't care what some other church you've been to told you. The rapture's coming. Jesus is coming. Amen? Oh. Say what? Pastor Cole preached a good message of Christmas last night. He's talking about the judgment. I said, I said that, is, that is a real Christmas message. We need to understand something. Sin is fun for a season. And then the judgment. Krispy Kremes are good for a season. And then the judgment. Are you with me today? Let's go to the word in Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. I don't want to be where God ain't. I don't want to be where God ain't. I don't want to be where God ain't. That means I don't want to say the things he don't say. I don't want to do the things he don't do. Are you with me? Today is a day of sacrifice. Today is a day of decision. Today is a day of going forward, hopefully, in Christ Jesus. The Lord said to Moses, verse 1, get going. I could stop right there and preach for the next 45 minutes. Get going. Get going. Stop just trying to reason things out and just get going. Brother Billy Weber preached a message a long time ago when, the, when it says about the, uh, the great commission of the church. He said, go ye therefore. He preached a whole message on go ye. Who's the ye? We be the ye. <laughs> if, if we believe that Jesus could come back this year, then what are we planning to do? Just sit back and wait till he comes? Listen, I know Jesus is coming. I want to go to heaven. I'm excited about it, but yet I'm not a one to hurry it along because I know some folks that still need Jesus. The great commission of the church ain't done yet, and there's still some work to do, and I'm going to believe that until he blows that trumpet because we need to be that fervent in service as, as a Christian to God and as a servant of God to others before that trumpet blasts. I got people that I, I want to make, I want to see them go to heaven. I ain't ready for the rapture to come yet. But you know what? I don't control that. I don't control that. Amen? God does. So therefore, what kind of hurry are we in to see our loved ones saved and to evangelize the world? Amen? And listen, don't get, don't be, and don't get so excited about the rapture coming without knowing where you are in Christ. You love the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, get going, you and the people you brought up from Egypt, from the land of Egypt. Now, this was after they were delivered. This is after they're in the wilderness, and Moses has gone up to the mount to receive the Ten Commandments. He comes back, and they have the P-A-R-T-Y, and they didn't have no alibi. And they were just doing everything, and even Aaron, the high priest, was joined up in there, and he was... Michael Jackson music everywhere and all sort of kind of stuff. And they had this golden calf, and Aaron's the one who created it, but he didn't take responsibility for it. Isn't it something that we create the thing, the situation we're in, but we don't want to take responsibility for it? And he told, he had the nerve to tell Moses, I threw in the gold, and out came this golden calf. I don't know what happened. It just happened. You think for God and Moses believe that for a second? <laughs> Listen to me. We've been throwing some things in the fire and some things have been coming out that God has not put together and formed. 
But it's time to take responsibility for it. And idols were mentioned earlier. Listen, God don't walk with people who have idols. It's time to make some decisions. I had to make a decision about my health. I can't do both. I can't have the crispy and the cream. Are, are you with me? Are, are you with me? There's a message in this. And, and I know what lies ahead. There's a consequence for every action. Amen. And so what God is trying to get his people together, he's trying to get them now. He says, now, bring, go get the people from the, that you brought from the land of Egypt, and now go up to the land I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I told them, I will give you this land to your descendants. And what land are we talking about? The promised land, land of milk and honey. Amen. And he said in verse 2, And I will send an angel before you to drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the, Hitt the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. He is going to send an angel before them to clear out the enemy, prepare the way. I love that we sang that song this morning. Because the Lord will prepare the way for us, but we need to prepare the way for Christ, amen, for our own lives and for the lives of others. God needs to have his way in my life. You need to let God have his way in your life so that he can work through you, so that he can have his way in the lives of others. Do you love the Lord? He said, I'll clear out your enemies. Don't worry about your enemies. I'll take care of all that. Just do what I told you to do. Go forward. I've never, seen, I've never heard of anywhere when, when the children of Israel were delivered from Egypt that they walked backwards. Walk backwards. But the promise is over here. You know where it says to be still and know that I'm God doesn't mean to be still in complacency and to be still in the valley of indecision, of indecision or indifference. If we, if we truly are still and know that he is God, then we do that while we're moving forward. But we do that while we're still driving forward in Christ. You love the Lord. Listen to me. Listen to the word of God. And then he said, go up to this land that flows with milk and honey. But listen to what he says next. But I will not travel with you. Moses praying. He's telling Moses all these instructions. Go over to the land of milk and honey, but I can't go with you. Christian said, go forward, but I can't go with you. When God says this, something is up that's not correct with us. Because the Bible, doesn't the Bible say that God is always with us? He's always with those, and he will walk with those, and he will walk and fight with those who are righteous. He loves everyone, but only when we walk in his will and his plan and obedience to him does he fight for us. Hmm. Do you love the Lord? He said, but I will not travel among you, for you are a stubborn and rebellious people. And the reason why he said I will not travel among you is because he's tr trying to have some mercy. He said, if I did, I would sure destroy every one of you along the way. Because if you're going to walk like you're walking, I'm a just God as I'm a loving God. i got to take you out because you're going to keep being rebellious. You better get saved because Jesus come knocking on the door with the crew. You know what's about to happen. I ain't talking about just people who are not saved. I'm talking about people who are saved who are children of disobedience and can become rebellious and become stiff-necked. There is an illustration of those that become stiff-necked. If you look up the definition of stiff-necked, there is an illustration sometimes that come with it as a farmer trying to pull the mule, and that mule has set himself like flint and stiff-necked. Once that mule sets that neck, you ain't moving that mule anywhere. God got some people in the church like that. Uh huh? And God says move, and they say, ah. Uh. God said move, and they say, ah. Uh. And that mule will move when that mule gets good and ready. But guess what? That mule might be sent to the glue factory. That little paste that you used to put on your hands back in the first grade, let it dry so you can peel it up. That could have been a mule. Listen. <laughs> He said, why can't I walk with you? Because you're a stubborn and rebellious people. If I surely, I would destroy you if, if, along the way. Listen, when the people heard these, the, these stern words, what did they do? They went into mourning and stopped wearing their jewelry and fine clothes. 
Somebody's getting a call to Jesus right now. Answer that call. Listen, the church today is so, con- so concerned of what's happening on the outward. And they're decorated in, in, in fine linen, so to speak, and jewelry, decorating themselves. Decorating themselves. Listen, when we live to decorate ourselves, something's wrong. When we live to uplift ourselves, there's something wrong. When, there, when we live to promote ourselves in ministry, our ministry, our way, there's something's wrong. There's a lot of folks, look through the history, who were once walking with God, some fine men of God, who started doing things their way and became like those mules who no longer stayed in the ministry. I'm talking about people who did some powerful things with God. I'm not going to sit here and make a list. Unfortunately, there is a list. Listen, and if it can happen with them, it can happen with us. So I can't travel with you. You're stubborn. I'd kill you. <laughs> Have you ever said that to your kids? I'd go with you, but I might kill you. So they went into mourning, and they quit wearing their jewelry and their fine clothes. For the Lord had told Moses to tell them, you are a stubborn and rebellious people. If I were to travel with you, even for a moment, I would destroy you, remove your jewelry and fine clothes until I decide what to do with you. This is God speaking. Church, we better take off these fine jewelry and the things we're trying to be and we think we are in Jesus and get our face on our face before God and find out what his plan and will is in a place of repentance or God's going to say, well, God, why aren't you moving? I'm trying to decide what to do with you. Because you won't make a decision in that fork in the road. You keep camping at the fork in the road. I can't use you if you're camping at the fork in the road, man. You know, you got to make a decision. You can't have the old man and the new man at the same time. You can't talk like hell and still think, say things of holiness. Are you with me? You can't watch. Listen, when you go down, when you take, make the decision to go down the path of righteousness, your eyes have to go with you. Your mouth has to go with you. Your ears have to go with you. Your heart has to go. You can't get baptized holding something out of the water. It's either all or nothing. It's time to decide which way you want your heart to go, which way you want your mouth to go, which way you want your ears and your eyes. You still love me. Do you love the Lord, more importantly? Stay here until I decide what to do with you. So from the time they left Mount Sinai, the Israelites wore no more jewelry and fine clothes. At least some of them had come to a place of repentance. They heard the truth, and instead of bucking against the truth, they received it and said, you know what, there might be something wrong with me. That thing, that's the problem with the church today. We don't think there's, that there possibly could be anything wrong with us. Then why did God tell us that we are saved by grace if we were so good? God doesn't save you to make you perfect. He saves you and then perfects you. Amen? We're sanctified, separated, and dedicated for his service, but in a personal way, as we walk with God, we walk in a transformation. We keep evolving. When we stop evolving, when is we start asking questions? If I don't see any signs of God using me, I need to ask God, Lord, what's going on with me? Not what's going on with you. We point the finger at God a lot of times. We want to know what's wrong with God because he ain't heard my prayer. He ain't answered my prayer. He ain't doing things my way. You know what we sound like? What does this look like? A big sissy. And we get upset with God. Listen, let's not forget. It's not our plan. Thank God. We should be praising God every morning for that. Thank you, Lord. I'm not in control. I'm going to trust in you. Your hand I hold. That sounds like a cadence for military. Sound off. Come on, sir. Are you with me? Love it. I've, saw, I've seen a lot of military shows. I know how to do that. Do you love the Lord? He's talking about them being rebellious, but thank God for Moses who actually begins to intercede for the children of Israel. And they're all crying. They took off all their jewelry and they took off all the fine clothes. Now, this, and it kind of changes tone a little bit in verse 7. He said, It was Moses' practice to take the tent of meeting and set it up somewhere a distance from the camp. 
Why did he do that? Because everyone who wanted to make a request of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. Moses had to have his time with God, just him and God. And he went to the tent of meeting. He had to separate himself. Are you hearing me? We have to separate ourselves from the crowd and get along with God and let God speak to our hearts himself. Yes, thank God that we have preachers and teachers and evangelists and apostles and so on. But listen, you got to get to a place where you have a prayer time in your life where you can hear from God, not just say what you want or just speak to him. Where you have ears to hear what God is telling you. It says here at the beginning, God, God told Moses. How did God know? How did Moses know it was God? Because the Bible says, my sheep know my voice. And when God began to speak, Moses began to listen. And then after he heard what God said, what did he do? He began to pray and began to talk back to God because Moses wanted to get instruction, but he also began to intercede because he knew that God was upset with the, kid, with the children of Israel. He was upset, and he began to intercede. Listen, how many know that prayer changes things, but special kinds of prayer changes things? We're talking about prayer and fasting. I like what was said. If you have no intention to pray, don't fast. Because the prayer, the, the fasting is a separation of the ways and the things of the flesh, and then you press in with God with all your heart and the spiritual. That's when you begin to see things begin to stir. Amen. Put the things down of the flesh. Put the things down of the world. Or the thing. And like what else was said, some people eat one meal a day, and fasting is not really a sacrifice for you. Oh, I just ate one meal. Well, you eat, you eat one meal a day every day. It's not a big deal. But take something. I'm going to challenge you on that, too, like Brother Dwayne did. Take something that really means something to you and put it away for a while, whatever it is, the closest thing to you, and get along with God. And I'm going to tell you, not just, I pray in my car, too. I pray everywhere I go. But there are times when you've got to get down on your face and groan before the Spirit of God and just get on your face before the Lord. You ever ask God, at every beginning of the year, God, what do you want from me this year? We're always saying what we want from God, what we want to see God to do. But you know what? God is waiting on us to, have to do the same thing. God, what do you want me to do this year? Show me your plan. I don't want to be anywhere where you're not. I don't want to be anywhere where you're not. I don't want to be doing things that has nothing to do with you. And it also can mean good things, y'all. Are you ready to make that decision? See, people are, read, are afraid to make that kind of a commitment because they're afraid of what they will lose. Listen, when you make that commitment, rejoice at what you will lose and praise God for what you will gain. Because God never removes anything from us. He does not replenish with whatever his will is. And his will is that land of milk and honey. Listen, in order to get to that land of milk and honey, they had to do something. They had to leave the place of bondage and walk forward. They had to put down that golden calf and walk forward. And God still blessed them, even after that Kuyong Golden Cap issue. God still blessed them when they repented. Listen, no matter how bad you mess up, you can't mess up so bad, the grace of God can't reach you. And the mercy of God will not forgive you when you come to him with a repented heart. And yes, when you sin, you have to ask forgiveness. That's the dumbest thing ever heard. Well, we have the grace of God, so we don't have to ask forgiveness whenever we mess up. Read the I tell you what, husband, smart mouth off to your wife and see if you don't need to ask forgiveness. And tell her that I don't need to ask forgiveness. Pfft, you married to me. That's it. And then you're gonna come home, and she's gonna have that marriage license with a lighter. Now what? And next thing you hear is, Ch -ch -ch. or last thing you hear is, Pfft. and then for two weeks you don't see her. Looking like a raccoon is the. Do you love the Lord? Where's my glasses? So God is telling Moses, these people are stiff-necked, they're stubborn, they're all of that. And the Moses' heart begins to be stirred. Moses goes into the tent of meeting. Verse 8 says, whenever Moses went out to the tent of meeting, all the people would get up and standing at entrances of their own tents. They knew they couldn't go where Moses was going. 
but what a tragedy that they couldn't. And at the entrances of their own tents, they would all watch Moses until he disappeared inside the tent. As he went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and hover at its entrance while the Lord spake with Moses. When the people saw the cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they would stand and they would stand and then bow down in front of their own tents. And st- inside the tent of meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Afterward, Moses would return to the camp, but the young man who assisted him, Joshua, son of Nun, would remain behind in the tent of meeting. Now, why do you think the cloud was, was at the entrance of the, the tent? For the same purpose, the cloud was at the Red Sea to keep the enemy at bay. Because people are curious, this was not for anybody but Moses and God. And God begins to speak. And we sing a song about, when, about seeing God face to face. Can I tell you something about that song? It is correct only if you're ready to die at seeing the face of God. When we get a full revelation of who God is to us, something has to die. We can't live for Christ until we are dead to the flesh. Doesn't mean we won't ever struggle with the flesh, but you get that struggle to God and keep moving. Doesn't mean you won't fall down, but when you fall down, you get up. When I have a revelation of who God is and what is involved in serving God and what he wants me to do and go where he wants me to go and do what he wants me to do and say what he wants me to say, I might fall at times in that effort. Amen. But praise God, the Holy Spirit's always there with a hand extended and said, I'll help you up. Let's get up. Let's not stay here. Let's keep going. Are you with me? When we see the face of God, when God reveals himself to us, something has to die, and it must be the old man or the old woman or the old child, whatever is not God. Do you love the Lord? And Joshua stayed behind. I kind of think Joshua stayed behind for two reasons. Joshua was wanting to hear God for himself as well, but I also believe he guarded that place of holiness. Praise God for people who guard the church. I may preach a message this year on the watchman on the wall. Thank God for the watchman on the wall. Amen. I love how Pastor Ronnie is with the place that God has called him to. And, we're, and, and anybody who's involved, been involved in building this place in, in sweat, blood, and tears, they watch over it. Why? To make sure nothing bad is going to happen to it. And they, watch, and they call it out whenever something does not go right. I like people like that. Amen. Who's going to call something down? Who's going to call an injustice down and say, whoa, 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 wait. Slow your row, hoss. Are you with me? The problem is sometimes God people can't take that kind of. It's time that we learn how to take discipline from God. If we don't, what does the Bible say? That we're illegitimate offspring if we do not readily accept the correction that comes from our Father. If we don't, we're none of His. Do you love the Lord? It's quiet today. We're going to shout some amens in a minute. Hang on. Because, listen, one day Moses said in verse 12 to the Lord, Moses is praying with God. Listen to the kind of relationship that Moses has with God. Because he tells, he tells the Lord, Now, Lord, you have been telling me Take these people up to the promised land, but you haven't told me whom you will send with me. God, I need some revelation here. I I like this statement because Moses is realizing something about himself. He cannot do it alone. When you see these lone rangers pop up in church who think they can do everything, they're going to make try to make you tanto, but you ain't tanto. Get away, listen, get away from them but just walk alongside them and encourage them. Listen, you cannot walk this walk with Jesus by yourself. If you think you can, then you're destined to fall flat on your face and maybe become that rebellious and stiff-necked person because you can't do this by yourself. Jesus even had his disciples. And praise God, he had three of them in the Garden of Gethsemane with him who took a nap while he was praying. (sighs) Even Jesus went out there and said, what? <laughs> I'm sitting here pouring out my heart. This is the pinnacle of my life. Could you not stay awake with me for one hour? 
You need Jesus. I need Jesus. We need each other. To lift one another up, not cut each other down, ow, and to move forward what God called Christian Assembly to do. Listen, we've been celebrating, we're about to celebrate 40 years. Say that word with me, 40. You know what comes after 40 years? Deliverance. You know what comes after 40 years? Movement. God's got a plan. You know what happened within those 40 years? God was working out his plan. But about every 40 years, God began to do something more, a lot of times of what there was already of, but also building on that to accomplish his will. Always evolving. Christian assembly, we need to always be evolving. If we're not, then I'm 58 years old. We got to start praying about the next pastor. That's not old, but you know, I can't wait until I die to see somebody else. Notice, Pastor Cope, founding pastor, is still here. He didn't go nowhere until he saw it going in the right direction. And I'm not saying God's about to take it home. I'm not saying that. Pastor Cope, I'm not saying that. Amen. But listen to me. He has stated out loud, he said, it's good. Why? Listen, he could have said, don't worry about this, I got this, until the Lord takes me. He never said that. He said, this is God's will. Come on. Why? Because he wants it to continue. That's a heart for God. It's a heart, that's, uh, it's a heart for what we're talking about today. To be where God is and to not be where he ain't. And I praise God for people like Pastor Cope who said, okay, here you go. But you know what? I also like that he doesn't stop watching over it. I like that. I also like that it has somebody that, that kind of helps reel me in sometimes because I, I'm still growing. Not this way, but <laughs> this has stopped growing because it's camping out at that bald spot in the road. Do you love the Lord? I'm almost finished. This, this is what Moses begins to say. And he said, you have told me, and, and I know, listen to how God responds. He said, take these people up to the promised land, but, but you haven't told me whom you will send with me. Uh, you, you have told me, I know you by name, and I look favorably upon you. But then he's beginning to talk to God and say, and he says this, if it is true that you look favorably upon me, then let me know your ways. We want the favor of God, but do we want to know his ways? What is Moses saying? I don't want to live my way, Lord. I want to know your way. I want to know what your plan is. I want to know what your will is. God, show me. I can't go forward again from this level on until you show me. Reveal to me your way. He's not mad. He already told me he's leaving. He had to leave early. Amen. So I may understand you more fully. See, Moses is already a Christian, but he has a hunger to know God more and more. See, he wants to evolve. He can't stay the same way and push on to what God has for him next. We think we can do the same and say the same and be the same and expect God to bring more things. He will not. He gets us to evolve so that he can do in us what his will is, what his plan is. You can't today, you cannot stay the same the way you are today for what God has next. Thank you for that one quick hand clap. If you don't believe it, stay where you are. Now, when Moses was speaking right about now, he was an old dude. So age ain't got nothing to do with your issue. Age does not, should not hinder obedience, young or old. And action for the Lord. Listen. He said, you're looking favorably. Let me, let, let me know your ways <laughs> so that I can understand you more fully and continue to enjoy your favor. What he said? What, what did he say? How many of you enjoy God's favor? 
I'm talking, you realize, Lord, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not abusing your grace so that, so that I can sin more, but God, I'm enjoying your favor because you love me unconditionally. I enjoy that because I ain't got to be perfect. I know that I'm growing in you. You got this. Praise God. Even if it goes bad today, I'm going to get up and I'm going to keep going. I got your grace to help me keep going forward. Praise God. I'm not perfect, but he is. But a person that enjoys the favor of God can only be a person who's on the move for Jesus. Why is God's favor not on me? God's favor is on you every day. But you just need to realize it. And I love these special preachers that tell people, and the favor of God was upon me, and he gave me this ministry. Well, my Bible says the favor of God is on every child of God. <sighs> without which none of us would be here today. Why? Because I have it by good story that none of us are perfect, but we are perfected from glory to glory, evolving. Praise God for evolution <laughs> in that way. Are you with me? But listen, here's, here's where we're going to get personal this morning. Moses begins to pray not just for himself anymore. Listen to what he says. He tells God after that, and remember that this nation is your very own people. Why is he beginning to pray that? God, Moses knew that God was angry with his people. And Moses had enough experience to God to know what God could do next. Amen. So he begins to intercede. In that statement, what he's saying is, Lord, have mercy on your people. God, have mercy. Have mercy. They've been through a lot, God. Have mercy. How many of y'all, how many of you in here, you ever built the golden calf after you got saved? I'm not going to look, so you can raise your hand. I'm not looking. Or you did something really dumb after you've been saved? Sister Kenny's raising his hand. Amen. Done something really dumb, just really stupid. Thank you for the three people who were honest up in his place. You see, some people know they did some dumb things, and other people don't know they did. But we all have been there. I don't know what happened, Lord. This golden calf just come out the fire. Are you with me? We tell God those things. God says, really? But listen, Moses begins to have mercy. And in verse, verse 14, the Lord replied, Moses, I will go personally with you, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Now, see, if God spoke a word of like that over us, some people would be running and jumping. God's going to make it good for me, only me. Ooh, I don't care about nobody else as long as I got mine. Ooh, it's good. Break. Ooh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump and shout. God's going to go fa show favor in me. I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to walk in blessings. Hey, Amen. I ain't worried about nobody else but me and Jesus. I believe that Moses would be tested right here to find out what kind of heart he had to be justified to move forward. Because God is no dummy. And neither is God selfish. And neither is God stupid. And he's talking to Moses. They're having this conversation. And Moses begins to say, God, these are your people. And God said, I'm going to make everything right for you. But then Moses said in verse 15, listen, the crux of this message. He said, God, if you don't personally go with us. He didn't put the me in there. He said, us. God, if you, the person, don't go with us, don't make us leave this place. In other words, God, if you ain't going, I ain't moving. If you're not budging, I'm going to stay right here with you. I don't care about the blessings. I don't care about the favor. I don't care about the whatever you're going to pour upon me. I don't care about that anointing. All that matters, God, is that I'm with you. I want to be where you are, and I don't want to be where you're not. But, Lord, it's not just me. Take the whole church with you. Church, that message is for us. If God ain't doing it this year, we ain't doing it either. If I don't read it in this book, we're not going to involve ourselves in it. I'm not going to learn some man-made action or faction that we can practice here to make us feel good. 
A lot of people falling down doing these courtesy drafts just because it's a part of their religion. Ain't got nothing to do with being saved. I was raised Pentecostal. I've seen some miracles happen. I've seen people fall out and get up the same way. I've seen people fall out changed. Seen some real stuff. Seen some fake stuff. Seen people flop around like fish. And ain't evolved none the, none the wiser or none the greater. We blast the Catholics all the time. We need to check ourselves and find out some of the things we're doing. Where, you show me where it's at. I'm not challenging the Bible. I'm challenging what we believe. I don't want to be doing nothing that ain't got nothing to do with God. But you know what? I want everything that has everything to do with God. And if God chooses to one day flatten us all out at the same time in the church service, it's going to be him and only him. God, God can choose to do whatever God wants to do. And I want to be, this is, my, this is not my resolution for this year. This is my heart for the rest of my life. And the truth is, what if Jesus comes this year? What kind of servant should we be? What kind of things are we searching out? What kind of things are we looking for? Do we want more of, do you truly want more of yourself? How many of you would stand and give testimony? I, ha- I have a resolution. I want to be more like myself. <laughs> and your spouse is already standing up saying, no, you know. And your kids are saying, no, you know. When Blaine <laughs> got up in the Marine Corps, and this was after boot camp and after his training and stuff, and he came home for a furlough, and I said, you know what, bro? You're a big Marine and all that, but I'm your daddy. I, c- I can still take you. He said, no, Daddy. <laughs> I said, no, really. He goes, no, really. <laughs> and you know what? I didn't challenge him on that. You see, because the boy that left my house became the man that was prepared for battle. And by myself, I could. there's no way I can come against him and win. We need a partner. His name is Jesus. But, we need, but God, but Jesus wants a partner that is fully surrendered to the will of God in their life and everything they do and that they are. For people who want to sacrifice anything at that fork of the road to see good things happen, not just for themselves, but for the people whom they are with. I want to see God do great things with Christian assembly. I don't want to see no empty seats. But you know what? I ain't doing it by myself. I need some warriors with Christ and people to step up and keep moving and keep going. Hey, Amen. I need some people who's going to step up and keep doing what but, but, but the copes have been establishing all these years. Hey, Amen. And not just the copes, but also the copes and other people. Blood, sweat, and tears poured into this place. Listen, it would not go in vain. This year, we're going to be that church because I'm going to pray it. This fasting and prayer thing, Pastor Troy going to be praying for every single one of you, but also for Pastor Troy. Pastor Troy first, and I'll be praying for you. God's got some more. Say that with me, some more. What does some more mean? It means more. That means God ain't done. But see, the, the building is not the thing that God is chasing. It's us that he's chasing to do more. I'm excited about the rapture, but I ain't ready for it to come yet. I know people are going to hell in a handbasket. And I want to see them saved before. Now, I don't think that everybody in the whole world is going to be saved when the rapture comes. Unfortunately, that's not the truth. But you know what? We're going to try to do as much as we can until that happens. Moses begins to pray. Says, Debbie, you can come. He said, if you, personally, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. That was Moses' heart. He was sincere about this. Listen, let me ask you a question. God is basically saying right here, go into the promised land, but I'm not going with you. I can't go with you. Why did God say that? Because God is a covenant-keeping God. And he said he would send them to a land full of milk and honey. But Moses is beginning to see, and I think other people would have seen, what good is a land of milk and honey if God is not with me? What good is it me to be in church if God is not with me? 
What good is it to me to read my Bible if God is not with me? What good is it that I'm in my prayer closet if God isn't there? There are so many folks focused on the blessing of what God can do for them rather than on God himself. When that point of view begins to change, God begins to change us. And then he will bring us on that that right road to salvation, that right road to obedience, and watch great things happen. See, when we let go of the blessings and grab a hold of God, God blesses us with what we need. And life is an enjoyment all of a sudden, regardless of what the circumstances are. And once we've made that sacrifice of going then that right way, God does great things in us. It's time to chase after the relationship with Jesus and not just the benefits that come with him. What good is all that without God? Can I read the rest of this? That's okay. He said, if you don't personally, if you don't personally go with this and Please don't make us leave the place because how will anyone know that you look favorably upon me, on me and your people, if you don't go with this? God, how are we going to do anything for you if you're not with us? For your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. And here is again the problem. There are Christians that want to camp out between worldliness and holiness. Between worldliness and and holiness. A long time ago, I was at a conference at T.D. Jakes' church, and they had some, some big old dudes on each side of them. The message was called Holiness versus Humanity. And T.D. was in the middle, and then you had these big old dudes playing tug-of-war. And on each side, the humanity part kept tugging at him, and but the holiness part kept tugging at him. The, ho- the humanity part kept tugging at him. The worldliness kept tugging at him. But the holiness kept tugging at him. You know when the decision was made? When he let go of one of the ropes. There was no longer a struggle. There was no longer a tug because he made a decision. You can make a decision to let go of the rope of holiness and follow after your own humanity. But that's the left road. <laughs> and we know the end that, of, the, of, of that one is. But see, that humanity side of us wants to not let go of the humanity side of us, but still hold on to the holiness. We want the blessings of holiness, but we want the, we want the, the, the joy and pleasures of the humanity, of even having our own way and having control of everything. you got to let go of one of the ropes today. It's either the left or the right, and we must decide. When I told my doctor that day my decision, I said, I'm going to go right. And I started making strides since then and see some differences. And for once, do what the doctor says. <laughs> you see, a lot of times God's trying to get us to do something, but we're not, we're not wanting to do what God says. And we become those rebellious, stiff-necked people. You ain't got to be all boisterous about being stubborn or stiff-necked. You're simply just not moving the direction that God has called you to move in. That means salvation, but it also means after we are saved. We've got to decide not to keep camping at the fork of the road. We've got to make a decision. Will you stand with me today? I'm excited that we are about to celebrate 40 years of existence in this world, doing it, doing it for Jesus. I wasn't here all 40 years. This year is going to be our seventh year. Guess what comes after seven years? Guess what comes after seven days of marching around the walls of Jericho? Seven means something too. And it all includes victory. I do not have a clue what God wants next about most things here. But I do know what his word says, and and I do know what his Holy Spirit is speaking. God, I believe, is going to do a great move in these last days before that trumpet sounds.
No way can you can ever make believe that God's finished. God is not finished. He'll be finished when he calls us home. Till then, where are we at in that fork in the road? If you close your eyes and bow your head and bow your hearts before God and be honest before Jesus. Because I'm going to tell you, that great white throne judgment is going to be for those who are still standing at that fork in the road when Jesus comes, who have not made a decision. And yes, it's going to be for those who went left. <laughs> Say, Brother Troy, then the only resolution is to go right. Yep. But you have to decide what you want down the road. Are you ready to let go today is the question. If you've not been saved, if you're home watching by television, if you haven't been saved, it's time to give your heart to Jesus. We are out of time. Jesus is coming. And it's coming back for those who are saved, born again, who have made themselves right with Christ by accepting Jesus into their heart and asking him to forgive their sins, to wash their sins away. But then they commit to live a life in Christ. Jesus is coming. Please make a decision. For those of us who are saved, please decide today where you're going to go with God and how you go with God. I pray that we get a heart like Moses. And first of all, it's not just for himself, but also for his brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, begin to say, God, this year, if it's not of you, then get it out of my life. I give it to you. If anything in my behavior is displeasing to you, God, it's not lining up with your word, then I give it to you. I don't want to speak. I don't want to think. I don't want to have my own will like the ways of the world. I'm letting go. I'm letting go. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to live for you. I'm taking that right road, Jesus. I'm taking that right road. I'm letting go of this sin that so easily besets me today. I'm letting go. I've had a sin habit. I'm letting it go. There are some habits today. I'm letting go of Jesus. I'm giving it to you. Forgive me for holding on to these things. Lord, forgive me for trying to hold on to the world and trying to hold on to you at the same time. It's impossible. Lord, I let go today and I decide to walk with you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I, I renew my commitment to you today. Father, this very first day of this coming year, Lord, I'm going to live it day by day, but year by year. Lord, this year I'm, I want to do greater things for you, but I know it's, I need to give everything to you. You may be in here thinking you know what God has called you to do. But you need to let that go, too, because you need to get God full control of what he's called you to do so that he can use you in what he's called you to do. Let it go. Trust God. Let it go. Trust God. God will supply it. God will make it happen. God will bring it. Anything that is of God, he'll, he'll, he'll furnish it. He'll make provision for it. He'll give the power to endure it. He'll give you the ability to make it happen, and he'll walk with you away. Let it go. Make a decision. Decide. Decide how you want God to use you in this coming year. Decide. But you can't be two people doing the thing that God has called you. Let one of these things go. Let the humanity go or the holiness go. I pray that you let the humanity go and grab a hold of the holiness and let God work in you greater things so that you can do greater things. And in all of that, this year, people, let's pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's uplift one another. Let's walk in unity. Let's settle something right now. None of us are perfect. But we want to walk in perfect unity like never before. Prepare the way is what we sing this morning. How about we do that? this year and prepare the way of the Lord. Make the way for His will to be done in your life. Make the way for His plan to unfold in your life this year. You do that by, by getting still and quiet before God on a regular basis. Find that place. Find your tent of meeting that's separated from everyone else 
and let God put that cloud over that entrance to let people know that uh, he's with God let, let, or she's with God. Let me leave them alone for a while and talk with God. Be honest with God. Search God. Seek God. You'll find him. You'll find him. You'll find him. Keep believing. Keep trusting. Keep on keeping on. Keep on pressing in. Forget those things which are behind. That's one of the things that people struggle with, and some of you, I believe, are struggling with that. Let go of your past. You are not that person anymore. The things that have happened to you, the hurts, let that go because that's done. It's under the blood of Jesus. Walk forward. The devil wants you to stay in the past so you'd be paralyzed about your future. Let it go. I don't care what it is. God is able. God is able. Decide. Let it go. Decide. Let it go. Lord, we come to you. We thank you for your word of mercy and grace. We thank you for your word of direction. We thank you for your word of correction. We thank you for your word of warning, but your word of mercy and love, compassion. All that has been in this scripture today. Lord, I'm not going to pray that you help us to be like Moses because Moses' heart was to be like you. So, Lord, my prayer today is make me to be more like you and a whole lot less of me. Lord, I surrender myself to you. Have your way. That's our prayer. Lord, have your way. Have your way in Jesus' name. And everybody would say, amen, amen. Greater days are coming. Greater things are coming. God is good. Satan is already defeated. Amen. Now, one more thing before you leave. Man, that right road, it doesn't, it doesn't mean it won't be bumpy at times. But God already said he'll send an angel before you. He'll take care of those bumps. You just keep walking. Amen. Hug somebody away. I tell them you love them. Whatever you do today, do it with joy, and we'll see you. God bless. Happy New Year.